Hey there. So sometimes we need to update a lot of records all at once within success factors. The good news is that success factors has a lot of tools to allow us to do this. The bad news is it can be kind of confusing to figure out which tool to use for which scenario. So that's the objective of today's video, kind of to get you a primer on each of these different tools and when you might want to use each. So let's get going. Okay, just a couple of things I wanna say up front. Number one, this video is a product of a lot of research I have done. I have worked with all these tools over the years, but I've never really sat down and truly tried to figure out what the benefits and drawbacks were to each until I did this video. So this video is a product of that. Secondly, normally I would go in and I do a lot of demos in these videos and I'm just going to go through a presentation today and instead I'm going to link to all of the other videos I have done, some of which have been published, some of which are going to be published that allow us to go through and do the demonstrations in those linked videos. That's the plan for this video. So we're just going to go through some presentations. I'm going to give you my thoughts and send you on your way. Okay, so the objective here is to provide guidance on which tool to use for which task. So we're going to go through mass data management. We're going to go through mass changes from metadata imports. We're going to go through file imports, mass updates, the employee's version of that, and then mass, or excuse me, employee file import. So I'm going to go through each of these and give you my pros and cons. And then at the end, I'm going to give you my recommendation of which ones to use or under which scenario. Okay, mass data management. So this is the simplest tool. And basically what it allows you to do is you can select positions using the position attributes and then do updates in mass. And then the changes propagate to employee job information. This was actually the first video that I ever published was on mass data management. So it is near and dear to my heart, but it does have some benefits and some drawbacks. So let's go through those right now. For the pros and cons of mass data management. So the pros are it's simple and it's intuitive. It's also the newest tool. So why is that a benefit? when success factors goes to the trouble of investing in something and building it out that means that they are probably planning on enhancing it and really you should be kind of biased towards using that tool so that's what i would kind of recommend in this case is think about just continuing on and using this one uh, the other pro that i probably should have put down here but it's when we get to the next tool and that is that this is a tool that really was intended that for business users so maybe the less technical among us would be able to potentially use this tool and we you would be able to roll it out to kind of that middle ground power user that isn't going to have as much of the configuration knowledge so that's the benefit of the mass data management tool now let's get to the cons so the cons and you're going to see this pretty much on all of the position based tools that we have and that and the big con is you cannot update employee fields unless they are shared with with the positions the example i'm going to use here and it will, again it will apply to all of the position based tools is let's say for example that the cost center i need to update the cost center on a whole bunch of people i can do that through the position because the position also has the cost center on it but let's say that i need to do a mass update of work schedule and let's say that I'm an organization where I'm not going to try to keep up with the work schedule and store that on the position. I really just want to store that on the employee. So for that field, of course, I would not be able to go through and use a position-based tool to make the change to the work schedule because the work schedule doesn't exist on the position. So therefore, we would be needing to use another tool for that. So again, that is the big drawback on any of the changes that we want to make for a position-based tool for mass update. The other con that we're going to get to here is it really doesn't handle complex criteria. And uh, this is really in contrast to the next tool that we're going to talk about. So bottom line for this one is if you've got a you've got a group of positions and those positions all need to be updated, then this and, it, and the, the criteria is pretty simple. I would definitely lean towards using the mass data management tool. Okay, next one is mass changes for metadata objects. So this one existed before mass, mass changes or the mass data management tool. But I, what I suspect happened here is that some customers came back to SAP and said, this is a little too complicated for some of our end users. Can you give us more something simpler? So that's where the mass data management came from. 
but the mass changes from metadata objects actually is more powerful and it gives you more options. So it's, so again, it's similar to mass data management, but the, it really, the difference is it uses business rules for determining what kind of who all, what all kinds of positions need to be updated and what kind of attributes need to be updated on the position. And uh, so, and it's very similar to what happens on mass data management. And I guess I probably didn't make this point clear enough on mass data management, but whenever I make changes to these positions, they will, the changes will update onto the employee's record. So that's the big benefit here. So it again, it allows us to make changes on the position side, have them flow through to the employee. Okay, so mass data changes the pros and cons here. So again, can handle really it can handle any the criteria that can be expressed in a business rule. So this can if you can come up with an if then statement to based on the attributes of a position, then this is the tool for you because you can build this all out and it, it will allow you to use those those uh, complex criteria. The cons are you cannot update, again, the same thing I'm going, I said before, you cannot update employee fields unless they are shared with the position. And then it also requires good knowledge of business rules. So you really, this is a really powerful tool and it could be, a, in theory, a dangerous tool if you didn't know what you were doing. So this really would be a tool that a smaller subset of within your organization would have access to. So again, a very powerful, very useful in certain use cases, but you would not be some, this would not be something you would roll out out widely within your organization. Position file import. So I'll go through this one pretty quickly. It's pretty obvious what this does. You would basically use a file upload to send import positions into your employee central environment. Um, if you also add this field here, technical parameters, and you, I've see, you see they've got the little red box around it. If you have this set with the word sync in it, then the change can be get propagated down to the employee. So it doesn't, by default, it doesn't automatically, I update a position, it does not automatically synchronize the change down to the employee. But if I put technical parameters and put sync in there, then it will push that data down. Okay, so let's get into the pros and cons of position file load. So the pros are, number one, full flexibility of which positions can, can be imported. You're not just related to, it's not, and not just limited to whatever you can come up with in a business rule. You can literally cherry pick whichever positions you need to update. The other thing that I wanna note here is that this is the only way that you can really mass import new positions. And if you want to do a whole bunch of positions with a whole bunch of different job titles all at once, this is the tool for you. So those are the positives for position file load. The cons are you, and we're going to see this when we get to the employee file loads, but with employee file loads, I can just by which fields I'm actually updating and I can populate only those fields. For positions, I actually have to populate all of the fields on the position, even if I'm only changing one of the fields on the position. So that can be a kind of a pain and there's, you'll have to come up with some sort of reporting tool or something like an integration center job that you can use in order to download and extract the current values for that. You also, again, beat a dead horse here, but you cannot update employee fields. You cannot use this as a tool to update employee fields if the field on the employee side is not shared with a position. Again, the work schedule. And then of course, whenever you're talking about file maintenance, this can be tedious, especially if you're, in, particularly in the case of updating positions, it can be a lot of fun trying to figure out if you're changing people's managers around, you actually have to go through a little bit of an extra step in order to figure out who the positions, uh, who's the manager, what the manager's position is, and then be able to update the file load with that manager's position so that you can keep the org structure in, in, in sync or reflect it accurately. So it's, this one's a little bit more of a pain. It's probably about the most tedious of the tools that we have to work with. So that's, that's what, the, the pros and cons are of the position side. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the tools available on the employee side. So the one tool that we're gonna talk about first is the oldest tool of all, and that is manage mass changes. This is on the employee side. Um, and so you can see here, you just basically go in 
I can do direct updates for the employee. I can, and I use dynamic groups, which of course you, you should be familiar with if you are involved at all with permissioning or anything like that. Dynamic groups are a way that you can use attributes of, of that employee in order to identify wh which employees you want to include in, in your grouping that you want to have updated. And then the good news is if you have everything set up properly, then the changes that you make on the employee side will synchronize back to the position via reclassification with one major exception that we will talk about here in a second. Okay, mass updates, pros and cons. The first one is it's really pretty simple and intuitive. This has been around, as I said, for a long time. It predates probably it predates position management for that matter. And so it's it's pretty simple. You just you can just identify which fields you're updating, you identify what your event reason and your effective date is, and you can make the updates happen. The cons here is that the manager changes. If you have, if I change a manager as part of a mass update, those changes, at least in my testing, did not update back to the leading positions. So in other words, if I make a change to the manager, if I change for everybody in a certain department, I update their manager to Sue Smith, that even though the employee side is going to get updated with that new manager re relationship, that doesn't mean that the, that the corresponding positions are also going to synchronize and be updated to Sue Smith's positions. And then the other con, and the thin, but dynamic groups can be a little bit more complex to work with. You know, that is something that may take a little bit more training in order to figure out wh whether to use the, how to use the includes and excludes and, and things like that. So that's what I would say for mass updates. But again, this is a really nice tool and it can do some, do some pretty powerful things as long as you don't need to update the managerial relationships. Okay, and then file import for employees. So this one's a really useful tool. So the great thing about file imports for employees is you only have, if I'm just updating just a couple of fields, then what I can do is I can put, and you can see some examples here, I can put no overwrite into the fields that I just want to populate it with what was already there on the employee's record. So that makes the process a lot simpler. And to go even further, you don't even, if, the field is not required and you're not updating it, you don't even have to include it on the load file. So it's only the required fields that even need the no override. I, if it's just, if you have 20 fields that are optional, that are not required in your job information, for example, and you want to, and you want to just hide those and you just want to keep the values that already exist in those fields, guess what? You don't have to do anything. You can just delete those from the load file and then the old values or the existing values will stay with that, with that employee's record. So that's pretty, makes it pretty powerful and pretty useful tool. So the file loads pros and cons. Similar to what we said about the position file uploads, you've got full flexibility of changes. You don't have, you can cherry pick throughout the organization, whichever employees need to be loaded. Of course, it's just a file load. So it's, it's pretty simple. And then of course, with the no overwrite, you can focus on only, on only those fields that truly need to be updated. All the other fields you can pretty much leave alone. And then the big con here is of course, similar to with the positions, working with external files are more, this is more labor intensive and prone to error. So of course, when I open up a file, it, it, there's a risk that I might drop the leading zeros. U, Unicode can be a problem. So I've got a video of, of course, that where I talk about using open office, that's my re, that's my tool that I use in order to make sure that I keep the data structured the way that it should go. So that's the main thing I would say. And, and so of course, anytime you're dealing with files, it's a little bit more labor intensive because you're not just saying, okay, I need everybody of a certain type of position or math update tool where I'm just saying everybody that's in this certain that, that's in a certain department I, I want these three things to happen to them it's just always just a little bit more work but it's highly flexible okay so we've made it through the pros and cons for each of these different tools so what I'm doing here is I'm going to kind of bottom line it for you about which tools to use under which scenario or under which conditions so I'm going to kind of walk through this slowly and hopefully by the end, it will all make sense. These first couple, I, it, it, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of nuance to it, so hopefully I can and talk you through it. Number one, if the change involves an update to managerial relationships, so in other words, if I'm changing the manager, that tells me right away I can't use the employee mass change tool that we talked about. Uh, and if I'm making a change to a managerial relationship, but no 
change to any employee based fields not shared with a position. So again, in our example, the work schedule. So if I'm not in, if let's say that the work schedule was not something that was on the position, but I'm not updating that, I'm only updating fields that are shared between the position and the employee. And I have just really simple criteria. If that's the case, then I would use mass data management. So the first place I should go for any kind of changes that involve both the position and the employee, I would immediately start with why can't we use mass data management? That's a nice, simple, clean tool. It gives you nice, good results. And I would definitely start here. And, the, and then figure out if you can use that. If, if you can, great. If not, then go on with the rest of these options. So number two, and basically I'm not gonna go through the trouble of reading the entire conditions again, because they're the exact same as number one, except that this is when, if the criteria is more complex and it's something that you cannot do through mass data management, then you trip over and you move on and you use mass, mass changes for metadata objects. This is a really simple, or not a simple tool, but it's something I use quite a bit. I'm, I'm really comfortable with because of course I work with business rules all the time. So, th so that is definitely a very viable option, particularly if it's a more complex change and you've got someone that's very well versed in business rules, then this would be the next logical alternative. Next up, if the change involves updates, so let's say we've gotten through, we now have, let's say that neither one nor two would work because let's say that I need to update job information and let's say that there were certain fields inside of job information. Again, I'm gonna use the work schedule in our example. Let's say that I would need to update the work schedule as part of the update that I want to do. Then what we could do in this case is we could use the manage, manage mass updates, the employee-based tool that allows us to say, for this dynamic group, let's update this specific field to this specific value or multiple fields to specific values. And so that's that would be the next tool I would use. And, but we have to make sure that there are no manager updates that need to happen because if there's manager updates that need to happen, we can't use this one. Really the last, I'm gonna say kind of the last tool for most normal changes that the one that you're okay, the catch all you can always use in almost for almost any use case, when in doubt, use employee data file loads. And so what that allows you to do is you can update any field on job information, any field, including manager updates, all of those can be done via a employee file load. And so that those changes will sync back over to the position. And I'm going with the assumption that most of the time when you have mass update changes that need to take place, there and the change happens on the employees, that's going to take care of whatever changes need to happen on the position side. So this is really kind of, to me, the safe harbor tool, when in doubt, you can use this tool as long as you have everything set up properly. Those changes that you make on the employee side will synchronize back to the position. So again, nice. If you're when in doubt, use employee file loads. That's the, the what I always tell my customers. And then lastly, file loads do have a job to play. And that is really, if I need to load new positions, and this is the only game in town. So if I need to load a whole bunch of new, and I don't wanna go through the position org chart, and let's say I'm not just the, creating 50 of the exact same thing in the exact same department, in which case, of course, I could use the position org chart and use the copy tool there. But let's just say I need to add a whole bunch of positions to different parts of the organization. Then that's when I would use the position file. I do appreciate you listening to me drone on. Hopefully you will see it, as you watch this, there are going to be links. There were links that were interspersed throughout the presentation to the different places where you can go to actually find out more information and see demos of each of these tools. That is it for today's session. And I do appreciate your time.